The views expressed on the following program are not necessarily the views of WIBA, its management sponsors or staff. Previous. Welcome to Outside the Box with Mitch Hank. To be a part of the program, call 321-1310 or toll free at 877-235-1310 or email Mitch at WIBA.com. Now here's your host, Mitch Hank, on News Talk 1310, WIBA, and WIBA.com. All right, it is D-Day. It is Election Day. I don't mean to disrespect the people at D-Day at Omaha Beach. No, it's an Election Day. Very important day. It's uh, Yes, all, I have to be careful with all the analogies I use. Uh, but we've been waiting for this day, and frankly, waiting for it to come so it would go away for a long time. But some of you are out there voting already. We got a big show this morning. We're starting off nationally, though, because it's been a nationalized election, and we have national implications, economic implications. And we turn to Gerald Salenti of TrendsResearch.com, who predicted everything right back in the day of the uh, SNL crisis, the uh, dot com bubble, the housing bubble, every bubble under the sun. Now he's talking about the bailout bubble. Gerald, good morning, sir. Good morning, Mitch. From TrendsResearch.com, and you have been uh, right on the money on a lot of these matters. And I wonder if you do some political forecasting, Gerald, uh, along with the uh, economic. Well, you can't really separate the two, can you? No, you can't. Social, economic, geopolitical, environmental. We look at over 300 different trend categories, all with the understanding that all things are connected. And there's a lot of talk out there about this being a historical election and you know, what today means. Well, it means the, the, the difference that we see would be the difference between the Bananos taking over from the, Ga- the uh, Gambino family. You know, there's really no difference at all. And go back to 2006, when the Democrats swept out the Republicans, they were going to put the Democrats in to end those wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. Well, yeah. And so it's just really the two-headed, one-party system. To us, Mitch, it's like watching the World Wrestling Federation. <laughs> but it's, it's the Washington Wrestling Federation. You know, they get attack ads out there, and they call each other names. And then they, after the show is over, they have a drink and do dirty deals together. Well, Nothing's different. But, Gerald, there's got to be a difference between John Boehner and uh, Nancy Pelosi, especially when the, the Tea Party movement has been going on out there. And I would think one of the key issues will be whether to raise the debt ceiling again at some point. And you look at California, which is bankrupt. If, if uh, a new governor, Jerry Brown, wants the Republican House to bail them out, they're going to say, screw you and... Uh, what do we have, people riding the streets in California? Well, you see, that's it. They, yeah, they will have issues like debt, and they'll have issues on the health care reform and Social Security. In the meantime, the big issues continue to go on. The trillion dollars that's being spent on the military, both through the Department of Defense and other defense-related expenditures, they won't cut a dime. The wars will continue to go on, and they'll be continuing to drain the Treasury rather than bringing the troops and the money back home. On the bigger issues of the economy, these guys don't have a clue how to fix it. They're the ones that caused it, the Republicans and the Democrats. You know the definition of insanity repeating the same thing over again and wanting different results. All right. Now, we've got, though, the possibility of um, a record year in terms of uh, the party out of power uh, taking over in the House. I mean, I'm hearing predictions. Charlie Cook, 55 to 65 seats. You have Dick Morris out there saying there could be as many as 75 seats. They need 39 to take over. They'll have subpoena power, and they'll have the ability to stop. I mean, all appropriations originate, Gerald, as you know, in the House. I mean, there's got to be more than a dime's worth of difference well, between they, both parties. They're, they're, when it comes down again to the big issues, Mitch, there won't be any difference. You know, they're, they are, they'll make a lot of noise, but on the major issues of what's sinking America, like NAFTA, the World Trade Organization, like, the bail, like, like all the bailouts for the big guys like the Glass-Steagall Act, which the Clinton and Bush administration destroyed, none of these issues are going to change. The gap between the rich and the poor in the United States will continue to get wider, and all where are these guys getting their money from? 
All right, we'll come back and we're going to get to what, what could be happening here in 2011 with our forecaster from trendsresearch.com, Gerald Salani, what he hopes uh, should happen or what they should do to turn things around, the economy being the overwhelming issue. At 8.33, we'll have Charles Franklin, UW Madison professor of political science. He'll break down the races here and elsewhere. Ben Mansky at 9, the Green Party candidate for the 77th Assembly District as he runs against Brett Halsey and Sheriff Dave Mahoney at 9.30. Much more ahead. This is News Talk 1310 WIBA. News you can use. News about your money. Wall Street is set to head higher today with the Federal Reserve policymakers meeting starting today in Washington. At the conclusion, Federal Reserve Chairman Ben Bernanke may unveil new plans to get the economy going again. In a speech today in Singapore, former Fed leader Paul Volcker says a fresh injection of cash could create a risk of inflation longer term, but the central bank should be able to deal with that problem. Still more earnings on the table today as well. Earnings at Pfizer have dropped by 70 percent, although the results topped forecasts. Sales of some of Pfizer's flagship drugs, including Lipitor, Viagra, and Celebrex, all fell. Apple's iPad is dominating the global market for tablet computers. 95 percent of tablet computers shipped during the third quarter were iPads, mostly because there are a few rivals out there. Sales of touchscreen tablets are expected to nearly triple in 2011. Wall Street headed for a positive opening with the S&P futures up 7, the Nasdaq futures up 12, the Dow futures up 54. I'm Ann Cates in the newsroom at marketwatch.com. Now, back to Outside the Box. All guests on Outside the Box appear courtesy of the Charter phone line, part of the Charter bundle package. Once again, here's Mitch Hank on News Talk 1310 WIBA and WIBA.com. All right, always telling it like it is, whether you like it or not. Gerald Salenti from TrendsResearch.com. One brief segment to go here. The election's going on. Uh, Gerald, the um, the Tea Party out there, it seems to be uh, people are going to those rallies seem to be care- concerned about debt and the government out of control, and too much government, and, and they aren't getting anything from the stimulus package unless they were in a public employees union or maybe they were a, a state that doled out money to K-12 through or whatever the case may be or worked on a bridge project at an engineering firm. The rest of the people didn't get the money. So do you think that's what's driving the frustration? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. there's no question about it. You know, the uh, little people are being squeezed <laughs> as they call us at every level. And the Tea Party's real. This is the beginning, beginning of a movement, and it's very positive. I really get angry with these people that try to demonize the Tea Party, like a lot of, you know, they call them a bunch of right-wing nuts. Oh, yeah, they're out of their mind, these Tea Party people. Imagine if they got into office, Mitch. Oh, they'd be sending predator drones into Pakistan and killing innocent people. They'd be increasing the troop strength in Afghanistan. They keep the war in Iraq going. Oh, you know what else they do? Oh, they give bailouts to their big friends in the banks. Oh, and what else they would do? Oh, oh, they would give all these chemical companies free ride and let them put all their GMOs and HMOs in our food. And oh, and they take away our constitutional rights as Obama and Bush have done with the abrogation of the, the, the Constitution and allow them unlimited wiretapping. Oh, and Homeland Security, they would make it they would make it so miserable to go to an airport, you would never want to go there again. Yeah, they make fun of the Tea Party. Look what the white shoe boys are doing. Well, Gerald, you, you, you seem a little bit um, cynical at this point <laughs> about the status quo, about the establishment. Oh, yeah, uh, the, this, esta- this establishment is destroying the country in front of us. You know, in the old days, Mitch, they used to do the deals, you know, behind the closed doors, and everybody thought things were okay. You know, they're doing it right in front of everybody. I heard this guy, Schwartzman, the, the CEO of Blackstone, one of these private equity groups, these people that do nothing other than deals. They produce nothing other than money. The cat's worth $6.4 billion. $6.4 billion. He's complaining. And if they do away with the Bush tax cuts, it's, quote, the equivalent to Hitler invading Poland in 1939. That's a little much, though. There. Yeah, a little much. I call this guy a right, sick but, money junkie. But we've got Bill Clinton, we've had uh, Terry McAuliffe, the former DNC chairman, businessman, say that there's there's over $2 trillion in private capital sitting on the sidelines because the people that have it 
are afraid of what their costs are going to be in 2011 with health insurance costs and uh, taxes going up, not to mention taxes on investment income. They're sitting on their money. You don't buy that? Well, again, you have money junkies like this guy Schwartzman and Blankfein and all the rest of the, goal, the, 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 the gang on Wall Street. Yeah, there's a lot of people with a lot of money, but the gap between the rich and the poor is the widest in the U.S. than any of the industrialized Okay, nations. but how do you get the people with the money to put more of it at risk and hire the little people if, if we're going to tell them they're going to take it? They're not going to hire anybody as long as there's no demand for product. And you have to create jobs. And we have to create jobs to produce things, not as home health care aides, not as restaurant workers, not as uh, clerks and cashiers. Okay, how do we do we that, have to bring back. We have to bring back manufacturing back to the United States. My slogan for 2011 is going to be, break the chains, buy local, bank local. We have to break the big guys up and bring things back to this country. And the key to doing that in 40 seconds is what? Well, first we have to put back the laws that they put in place to prevent this from happening. Going back to the turn of the 19th to 20th century with the robinson Patman Act and the Sherman Antitrust Act that, that made it possible for mom and pops to compete with the big guys. We have to put back Glass-Steagall Act that prevented the banks from becoming these casinos that gamble and grabbing up all the business. We have to put back what worked before and no more new laws. Other than uh, bringing back the ones you suggested, uh, now you've got Indiana with 9% of the manufacturing jobs in the country right now with 2% of the population. Their governor, Mitch Daniels, has been lowering taxes and regulations. Uh, they're getting Subaru plants. Uh, they're getting a Suzu plants. They're getting all this kind of stuff over higher tax states. Don't you think there's, um, you know, that's part of the mix? Well, no, no, that's not, because that's the other thing about favoring the big guys. You know, I'm, my master's was in public administration. I used to do, you know, economic mm -hmm. development. What a blo load of baloney this one is. You look at every one of these numbers, Mitch. They're giving these guys tax breaks, loan guarantees, infrastructure repairs, and that... They should, well, why are they getting them? Oh, I, we're creating jobs. It always costs the people at home. Well, Indiana's got a budget surplus right now, and we don't here, and they certainly don't in California. But we'll have to talk about this more in detail later. Gerald Salenti, TrendsResearch.com. Always, always enjoy your forthright commentary. <laughs> Take care. Thank you, man. Thank you.